I'm uh, Dr. Michael B. Sisti. I'm an attending neurosurgeon at Columbia University Medical Center, New York Presbyterian Hospital. My particular area of expertise in neurosurgery are complex tumors involving only the brain. These tumors are relatively uncommon. Uh, they're very challenging to deal with. If you're a patient who has one of these problems, they're very serious, very scary, particularly the cancerous tumors, but even the benign tumors as well. Tumors of the nerve of hearing imbalance, they're called acoustic neuromas. Tumors that line the inside of the skull, they're called meningiomas. Malignant tumors of the brain. Exotic tumors that are within the center of the brain, we call the ventricle, or tumors that are at the junction between the spinal cord and the brain. These are the kind of tumors I'm interested in and have very deep experience in treating. Sometimes many of these tumors, they're too small, they're too benign, and many patients are surprised to find out that what they have does not need to be treated other than just by checking scans. So overall the scan looks as good as it could possibly look. I get a lot of pleasure out of sometimes telling a person who thinks they're facing some kind of very serious and maybe life-threatening surgery that the problem they have doesn't even require surgery, may never require anything, and may just require some MRI scans for follow-up. Well, listen, we should definitely get him checked out. Another area of interest of mine that comes from my technical background in engineering is the use of machines that can operate on you. These are called radio surgery devices. I guess the premier device we have here at Columbia is the Gamma Knife. This is a device where we can basically destroy small, inoperable lesions in the brain. It's an outpatient procedure. Uh, we've done thousands of these here. And so a whole group of patients I see who might need some treatment don't need surgery. We can treat their problem using radiation techniques, and of course that's preferable because it's safer, it's easier to do, both for me and for the patient. And if we can avoid the operating room, then so be it. We've got the technology to do that. Hey, Dr. Sissy, we're turning your phone call. How are you doing? I've been a faculty member here for 22 years. Oh, pretty good. How about you? I've had an opportunity to see if what I'm doing actually really works because my patients, many of them live within driving distance of here. Um, and so I've been able to develop you know, relationships with those patients and see whether or not the things that I did actually really did what I wanted and what the patients and their families wanted uh, over a long period of time. But there's no reason why you can't go on your cruise. And I, th I, think, uh, I think it'd be good for the two of you. There's no risk. Take they do a doctor of the year thing here at uh, New York Presbyterian Hospital on the Columbia campus. And this is voted on by the staff that I work with, by the OR staff, by the nurses, by the ICU staff, by the ER staff. And so uh, this year, I was voted Doctor of the Year for the hospital. Of all the things that anyone could check on the internet and find out, the one that makes me happiest is the uh, recognition of the people who I work with as knowing what I'm doing and being a good guy to work with. Okay, Mr. Thank you, sir. Very good. Good to see you. Take care.